every storm of life. I know you're by my side, so I am holding on to your promises. You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams, so I am holding on. You'll never let go. Hope when hope was all but gone A second chance to sing a brand new song You opened up my eyes to see You rescued me, rescued me You showed the way when there was no way out Cleared up my mind when you erased all doubt You made me strong when I was weak Rescued me, rescued me Through every storm of life I know you're by my side So I am holding on to your promises You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams So I am holding on, you'll never let go of me You are my God You are my God, I know you'll see me through. Hey! You are my God, I'm holding on to you. You are my God, I know you'll see me through. Hey! Through every storm of life, I know you're by my side. And I am holding on to your promises. You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams. So I am holding on. You'll never let go of me. I know you're by my side. So I am holding on to your promises. You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams. So I am holding on. You'll never let go of me. You are my God. I'm holding on to you. You are my God. I know you'll see me through. Hey. You are my God, I'm holding on to you. You are my God, I know you'll see me through. Hey!
this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the...
Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church. My name is Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church, and I'm glad that you're here with me this morning. If you haven't checked in already, the comment column is right here. I hope you'll leave your name there together with the names of those who might be worshiping with you. It's always good to see who's with us on a Sunday morning. Uh, if you prefer to text me your name, you know you're welcome to do that, 903 821 4505. We have several announcements today. This afternoon, 3 o'clock, our All Youth Christian Fellowship Group will meet at Cinemark in Sherman at 3 p.m. Uh, we, ask, we ask youth to bring $8 for a movie ticket plus any snack money they might need. Uh, pickup is at Cinemark at 545. The movie is Dear Evan Hansen. Uh, remember that All Youth Christian Fellowship is not just for the youth at Leap of Faith Church, but any friends that might want to come along as well. We're glad for everyone who comes. This coming Sunday, October 3rd at 10, uh, 10 a.m. here in our fellowship area, Greg Holbrook starts part two of Greg Talks TED Talks. We'll be doing another five-week series. I hope that um, I hope that if you're an adult who's interested in a fellowship and discussion group, and you're ready to come back into the building, that you'll join Greg for Greg Talks TED Talks. October third is our Slingshot Discovery visit. Mike Goldsworthy is coming from California to get to know Leap of Faith Church and the Texoma community as he prepares to uh, begin a nationwide search for our associate pastor. If you're ready to come back in the building, that would be a great Sunday to do it. I hope that I hope that you can be with us here in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock. If you live too far away to be here, or if you're still uncomfortable with being back in the building, believe me, I understand that. And we'll be worshiping online at 9.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time, just like always. Coming on Wednesday, October 6th at 11 a.m., Maggie Helvey, Lysandra Nixon are starting a women's fellowship group. Uh, you'll be seeing more about that, but if you are a woman who's been wanting a fellowship group, put that on your calendar and take a look at our newsletter for more details. If you need the newsletter, if you're not subscribing already, please uh, fill out the form there at the bottom of the comment column or text me your email address. Again, that's 903-821-4505. Well, other ways to find out more about Leap of Faith, of course, mylofc.org, our website, our Facebook page, Leap of Faith Church, and then there is the newsletter that's mailed every Thursday evening. Again, if you're not receiving that in your inbox, your email inbox, just send me your email address. We'll be sure we be sure to add you to our subscriber list. Um, can fill out the form at the bottom of the co of the comment column or 903-821-4505. Just text me your email address. Those are the announcements that I have this morning. Now let's worship. Will you remember this? You are loved. You are wanted here at Leap of Faith Church. You are loved and you are wanted by our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask our Lord Jesus to be with us today and guide us as we worship. And now I invite you to worship with the music of the Leap of Faith Band. We walk by faith and not by sight Knowing if we just hang on Everything's gonna be alright If we trust in what we cannot see we will be saved if we walk by faith. We all have times when we're not whole. Living in the 
the shadows in the dark night of our soul. With every prayer we see healing. We pray for comfort, for strength and for peace. We walk by faith, not by sight. Knowing if we just hang on, everything's gonna be alright if we trust in what we cannot see, we will be saved. Times we've lost our way. Can't find the sunshine, every day's a shade of gray. No more dreams and no more tears. All we have is hopelessness, heartaches, and fears. What do we feel? We just can't take it anymore. Just hang on, everything's gonna be alright if we trust in what we cannot see, we will be saved if we walk by Trust what we cannot see, we will be safe if we walk by Leap of Faith is an independent church. We're not connected with any local church or any denomination. We adopted early in our life together the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to join me. The words are on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue in worship, I invite you to think back over your week, those times you felt so close to God, and those times that you wish that you could just do over again in order to make your life more pleasing to God. Name those times to yourself, name them to God, and I invite you to join me in prayer. God, we want what we want, and we forget even to ask if it's, if it's what you want for us. God, we want what we want, and sometimes we don't care whether it's what you want for us. And then we're surprised and angry and sad when we find out that what we wanted wasn't what we needed after all. Forgive us, God, and help us. Help us ask your will and follow your will in all things, regardless of what we think we want. God, hear this prayer, and hear us as we each confess to you silently on our own. Will you be sure that when we've confessed in the name of Jesus Christ, we're forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're forgiven, and so am I. 
Amen. Joys and concerns this morning. Well, I ask today your prayers as always for our world leaders, our national leaders, those who lead in the state of Texas, all the states of the United States, and our communities as well. I ask your prayers for those who are connected with Leap of Faith Church who are still suffering from COVID or from the long-term effects of COVID. I ask your prayers for Clara, for Rick, for Kim, Tia, Addie, Kathy, Brooklyn, Addie, Adam, Lonnie, Belinda, Shane, Brianna, Preston, Bill, and Vicki. Please pray as well for these who have other health-related health concerns, Jessica, Lindy, Pat, Dassey, Shannon, Shelley, Bruce, Scotty, Jim, Zora, Mike, Ronnie, and Laurie. Pray, if you will, for those all those who serve our country in the military, remembering especially Tyler, Jessica, Jordan, and Devin, They're connected with Leap of Faith Church. And we have a whole bunch of birthdays to celebrate this week. Today, the 26th, it's Tony Oliver and Chris Price. Tomorrow, Maddox Key. Also tomorrow, Lydia Pine. On the 30th, we celebrate with Phil Griffin, and on the 1st, Debbie Guins. Happy birthday to all of you, to each of you. And if you know any of these people, please give them a call, drop them a card, wish them a happy birthday. Other joys as well, we're thankful to Brad and Lysandra Nixon. They came out last Sunday to help with the, uh, the All-Youth Christian Fellowship scavenger hunt. Uh, we're thanking God for Pat Courtney. She's offered beautiful plants for the entrance to the church to dress it up next Sunday, October 3rd, for our discovery visit. We thank God today, as we always do, for the Leap of Faith Band, for Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook, who produce this worship service. If you have joys, if you have concerns to share, I invite you to use the comment column to do that. Or if your joys and concerns are, are, are more personal, text them to me, 903-821-4505. I'll add them to the church uh, prayer list if that's, if that's what would be most helpful to you, or just to my personal prayer list if that's what you'd rather. And now, let's pray. As autumn begins, we ask you today, God, for personal blessings in this coming season. As the leaves start to fall in the days ahead, help us let go too. Help us let go of all that's burdening us, weighing us down, and trust in you to carry the weight. As the temperatures cool, may our tempers, elevated with all the problems and worries of this year, God help our tempers to cool as well so that relationships we've set on fire will be restored. As the sun sets earlier each evening, God, with each nightfall, give us rest. Give us deep and peaceful and serene rest for spirits that are ragged, for emotions that are worn out, for bodies that are recovering from illness or injury. God, let the changes that come to the countryside, the roadside, the garden in this time of year. Let them remind us of the promise that in our love for Jesus and in his love for us, we too might change, leaving behind our brokenness and emerging from any trial from death itself, healed and whole. As we prepare in this fall season for the cold, dead days of winter ahead, remind us that in your love, hope never dies and life never ends. Remind us, God, that spring will come again. Hear our prayer. Hear the spoken and unspoken prayers of Leap of Faith Church. Our joys, our concerns, our hopes and dreams and disappointments and failures. We are trusting you with all of these in the certainty that you hear us and will help us. And now, God, hear us as we pray together in the way that Jesus has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
We're continuing in Acts today. Acts 18 verses 1 through 17 tells the whole story, but I'm going to read just three verses. Acts 18 verses 9, 10, and 11 and ask you to pick up your Bible at some point during the, the day, the afternoon, the week ahead and turn it to Acts 18 verses 1 through 17 and just read through that story yourself. For now, though, this is what we have. Again, it's Acts chapter 18, verses 9, 10, and 11. One night the Lord, one night, one, one night Jesus spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Don't be silent. For I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. I ask God to bless this reading of God's holy word. I'm wondering, I'm wondering this morning if there's maybe a movie star or a musician or a politician you see pretty regularly on the screen, one kind of screen or another, someone you read about or hear about in the news so often that you kind of get to feeling like you know them. And then something happens, something happens, and you realize that all you know is essentially a cardboard cutout of that person. It's a public image, and you really don't know that person at all. Are you with me? Are you following me? Maybe, maybe that person you think you know so well is charged with a crime and you realize that person you'd assumed was an upstanding pillar of the community has, like all of us, feet of clay. I've been listening to a podcast about leadership recently, and one episode is about, is about pastors who get into trouble of one kind or another, an affair, an addiction, an embezzlement, and end up leaving local church ministry. Almost always the members of the church that person serves, they're upset, they're surprised, they're shocked to find out that someone they'd assumed to be beyond reproach has human failings. But it doesn't have to be that dramatic. I remember finding out that a well-known well, person whom I knew to be a brilliant scholar had terrible taste in recreational reading. There was nothing salacious. He just liked to read what I considered to be bad writing. And, and after I learned that, I never felt the same about him again. It doesn't have to be anything negative, this business of public image not matching up with personal life. When Charlie Watt, the drummer of the Rolling Stones, died recently, his obituary noted that he'd been married, evidently faithfully married, to his wife, Shirley, for 57 years. And that's not what I'd expect, given the reputation of the Rolling Stones. The long and the short of it is, the long and the short of it is, we have to spend time with someone. We have to live close to them to actually get to know them. And that's one of the things that our Bible story today is about. By now, it won't surprise you that we're going to start with some background to this installment about the spread of the church from its beginnings in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. You'll remember that first Paul and Barnabas and, and John Mark circled around the northeast corner of the Mediterranean, starting and ending in Syrian Antioch, and that's called Paul's first missionary journey, his first foray into church planting. The last few weeks, we've been talking about Paul's second missionary journey. We've been talking about how Paul leaves Antioch a second time, this time with Silas rather than Barnabas. Timothy and Luke join them, and then they move the church into Europe, establishing the first European congregation in Philippi, and then moving south on down to Athens. Well, at least Paul moves south on down to Athens, while those traveling with him, they stay temporarily behind. Today we're hearing about what happens after Paul leaves Athens and travels farther south down to Corinth. And here's something interesting about Paul's move to Corinth. The whole of this second missionary journey, depending on the source you consult, was two and a half to three years long, start to finish. What the story today tells us is that about half that time, about half the time of Paul's second missionary journey, it was spent in Corinth. A half of the total trip, he was in Corinth. Long, long enough for those Corinthians to get to know who Paul really was, long enough for Paul to get to know who those Corinthians really were. 
Now, Corinth, it's 50 miles east of Athens, and in Paul's time, while Athens was a major cultural center, Corinth was a major commercial center. It had two ports. It had a large, diverse population. If you needed to make a living, Corinth was a place to do it. Evidently, by this point in his travels, Paul did need to make a living. He did need to support himself because the first thing he did when he arrived in Corinth was to meet with Aquila and Priscilla, tent makers who had recently relocated themselves from, from Rome to Corinth. Paul was a tent maker too, it seems, and the three of them went into business together. Evidently, all week long, these three worked side by side. They worked together day after day, Paul and Aquila and Priscilla, with Paul taking a break from his work only on the Sabbath when he went to the synagogue to worship God and talk about Jesus. You get to know someone. You get to really know someone working side by side with them day after day. At least that's been my experience. And then finally, Paul's companion Silas and Timothy show up, traveling from, from Macedonia to Corinth. The best guess about what they'd been doing in Macedonia is that they'd been fundraising in Macedonia congregations to support the mission. They'd traveled with Paul. They knew Paul. They knew Paul's needs, including his financial needs. Their help with funding, it allowed Paul to set aside the tent making and go full time into preaching Christ to the Jews there in Corinth. As those Jews had more opportunity to know Paul and his message better, they evidently decided that they'd heard enough, more than enough. And Paul and the Jews in the Corinth synagogue, they, they parted ways, I take it not happily. There was an argument, there was a bitter argument, and Paul left the synagogue and went right next door where he started a house church in the home of, of Titius Justus. A bunch of other Gentile God worshippers formerly connected with the synagogue, they came to the new church too, as did, as did some Jewish leaders from the synagogue together with just plain folks from Corinth. Many believed what Paul had to say about Jesus and many were baptized. They were baptized into the family of faith there in that house church in Corinth. Those Jews who were left in the synagogue though, they were not happy about this turn of events. Knowing them, Paul must have had his worries about where the bitterness between him and the synagogue would lead because here, here is where Jesus steps in and in a vision gives Paul the message that we read earlier this morning. I remind you, Jesus in a vision says to Paul, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Keep going. I'm with you and I have friends here. I have friends in this city as well. No one is going to lay a hand on you here. And Paul hears Jesus. And Paul believes Jesus. And he keeps on going in Corinth for a year and a half. He keeps on going in Corinth before he finally leaves. I dare say that those people in Corinth got to know Paul better than those in other towns in which he started churches. He was there a lot longer, a whole year and a half out of a journey that lasted just two and a half for three years and covered 2,800 miles. Parenthetically, when you, when you read Paul's letters to the Corinthians in the, New, in the New Testament, remember when you read them that Paul wasn't writing by and large to strangers. He was writing to people he knew very well, people who knew him quite well too. So that's the story today. That's the Bible story today, but what's the point of it? What's the point of it for you, for me, What's the point of us for a point of it for us here today? Well, as I've said over the past few weeks, our Leap of Faith Board of Directors has entered into a contract with a company called Slingshot to conduct a nationwide search to find us an associate pastor here at Leap of Faith. Odds are when that person is eventually found, we're not going to know him, we're not going to know her, except just what we've learned in the interview process. Also, this person will be the first, the very first full-time paid clergy person at Leap of Faith. His or her relationship with you, his or her relationship with this church will be, odds are, quite a bit different than our relationship, yours and mine. 
for one thing, some of you, many of you, you've known me very well over a very long time, for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. Some of you have known me that long. Some of you have known me a shorter time, but still, you know me pretty well. You've seen me at my best and you've seen me at my worst. You've seen me make great decisions and you've seen me make terrible decisions. You've seen me in a suit and pantyhose and heels and you've seen me in shorts and a mud-stained t-shirt. You know what I value and you know what I deplore. You know, what, you know where I excel and you know where I barely function. And you know I hope, I know, you know I hope that I love you. Not in a casual way, but deep down. A love that's developed as we stood together through all kinds of losses and all kinds of, of gains over the years. You know, I hope, that I am committed bone deep to this church and to this community. And I know, and you know too, that I'm unpaid clergy here at Leap of Faith. That's a benefit to the church in some ways, and in some ways it's a liability. It saves a lot of money that can be directed to other kinds of ministry. On the other hand, it doesn't allow me to be full-time here at Leap of Faith. When our new associate arrives, and there's no telling really when that will be, maybe as much as a year, maybe more from now, but when our new associate arrives, your relationship with that person, it's going to be different than our relationship, yours and mine. In the simplest terms, you're going to be called on to make every effort, every effort to get to know that person in a deep down way. You're going to be called on to extend yourself to get to know that person because you, you are here first and because that's the kind of church that we are. I hope that you will take that seriously. Your responsibility, your responsibility, your privilege to invite that person into your life to become part of your life. You'll also be called on to understand and, and remember the situation with compensating clergy. Pastors and preachers, they are not paid by the church in return for services rendered. Pastors and preachers, they're not hired by the church. They are called by God into God's service. In order, in order for them to answer that call, the church they serve provides for them. It used to be that the church provided for pastors in material ways, housing, car, food, even clothing. And that doesn't happen much, much these days. Nowadays, the church provides most times for its pastor with a paycheck. Again, not for services rendered, but to enable that person to answer God's call to local church ministry. What the Bible story today has to say about all this is that I'm hoping you will right now, right now, be asking God to prepare your heart to welcome the person God has already chosen to serve here at Leap of Faith. I'm hoping that you will be praying for that person who will come to us as God's servant, called by God to minister here at Leap of Faith Church among us. This will not be someone we hire. It will be someone we provide for in order that he or she is free to do God's work full time among us. So right now, please be thinking about it. Be thinking about the note of welcome, the card you'll send just as soon as we're able to announce who's coming, notes and cards of welcome to that person. Be thinking about the pounding you'll help the church host. Do you know that? Do you know that traditional way of welcoming clergy into the church, a party where everyone brings a pound of something to, to fill up the pantry of the new clergy family? Be thinking of inviting our new associate to go have coffee with you or go to a football game with you or come over to your house for a cookout. Remember that the Bible today reminds us of what we really already know. We have to spend time with someone to get to know them. Please be thinking right now, be praying right now about how you'll do that when in God's time we welcome our new staff member into the church, into the community, into our lives, and into our hearts. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to worship today. I hope that if you're not already a member of Leap of Faith, that maybe you've been praying, thinking, mulling over a decision to become a member of Leap of Faith. You know that you're always welcome here on whatever terms seem best to you for as long as, as those seem best to you. But I'd like to welcome you as a member here at Leap of Faith. If you're about ready to do that, give me a call, 903 821 4505. And please don't let distance stand in your way. We have members who are, are very, very far off site, and we do our best to minister, them, minister to them effectively. If you're ready to be baptized, let me know that, and we'll find a way to support you in that faith decision, 903-821-4505. If you'd like to support ministry here at Leap of Faith, we would love to have your help. Uh, years. There's a giving button at the top of the comment column. Just click on that button to make an offering for ministry here at Leap of Faith. There's the text to give option, 903-225-8774. You can give through PayPal on our newsletter, a PayPal giving button on our newsletter and on our website. Or you can just write a check. Write a check and send it to LOFC 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. If you joined us late and haven't left your name in the comment column, I invite you to do that now. Your name and the names of those worshiping with you. I invite you as well to push the, the share button and share this worship service with your friends. Please remember when we're finished up here to go to the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. Like that page. It's a good way to keep up with what's going on. And now in closing, may God create, may God create and recreate in each one of us the deepest love for all God has made and a heart to serve all of God's creation. Amen. I invite you to stick around for more music from the Leap of Faith Band, and I sure hope that you'll be back to worship again next Sunday, October 3rd. I will be looking for you. Go in peace, my friends. Go in peace. King Jesus is all, King Jesus is all. my all and all. My Me when I call, walking by my side, I'm satisfied. King Jesus is all, my all and all. Well, I went out to meet the Lord. Oh yeah, I got down on my knees. Praise the Lord. I said my very first prayer. Amen. You know the Holy Ghost, you met me there. Well, well, well. Stepped on a rock, the rock was sound. Oh, the love of God came a tumbling down. The reason I know that He saved my soul was I dug down deep and I found pure gold. And He's all, King Jesus is all. King Jesus is all. My all and all. My all and all. And I know that He'll answer.